Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. I am so excited today. We've got this fabulous chef that everybody's <laughs> talking about, Rocco Despirito. Thank Everybody you. loves you. I love that the New York Times said people moan over your food. So they must have made a mistake. Well, not they only moan they after they eat my food, is well, what they, they meant to say. By well, the way, don't be too excited. Once I take down your kitchen, you'll probably never invite me back. <laughs> well, all no. the women who've written in actually moan over you and your food, Ooh. so that's a good thing. that kind right? of a show? So, uh, yes. <laughs> so we've got a thousand questions, but okay. I'm excited about about this Italian ice, because I'm an Italian, and, really? I, I, and it's so fattening and so bad for you, all that sugar, but you've got a new way to make it, right? I do, I do. I'm really excited about this, and this is the dish I to show you because it's kind of like a magic trick. It's like something you could do at the dinner table at the end of a meal. Oh, wow. Easily. It's very cool. We'll oh, make it together. So normally, normally but um, I love Italian this little ice. Thing. Yeah, here. This, no. These are the calorie differences. So, Huge. Okay. All right. So normally. So normally four ounces of Italian ice and ice cream would be at least 300 calories, tons of fat, at least five grams. If you're talking about ice cream, it could be 20 grams of yeah. serving. This is 55 calories and fat free. I'm going to turn it over. 55 calories and fat free. Okay. Which is almost hard to believe. You should doubt these numbers because they are hard <laughs> to believe. So we start with water right. and lemon juice right. and agave nectar, which is a low glycemic sweetener that I noticed you have yeah. in your cabinet yeah, we already. Use it. Yeah, yeah. We and do. it's fun that you have it because most of the time when I mention it, people are like, what? Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Stevia. Okay, tell us what this is. Okay, so everyone, because it's an herb that grows in Colombia, everyone thinks this is like an illegal substance, but it's it not. It makes it it's, better. It's, <laughs> that's right, the 60s. Right. right? Um, it's, it, it's an herb that's 300 times sweeter than sugar. It literally grows like an herb does, leaves. They dry the leaves and they make a powder. And you where can, do we buy that? You can buy it anywhere. It's oh. been available for almost 100 years. And so say the name again? Stevia. 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 Okay. It's in the hippie section. Usually. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll find it. If you go to you know, where they sell like the whole grains and stuff like that. Right. So it's, it helps to have this blender. This is a particularly powerful blender that has a low setting uh -huh. like that. You see how low that is? Yeah. That's really cool and that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is add the thickener. The thing that's going to give this ice cream its texture and that's xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is a natural thickener that just comes from, I told you, bacterial slime. I know. I know. It sounds don't terrible, tell, right? Don't tell it us that awful. Part. And where do you buy that? Also in the hippie the section. Okay, in the hippie good. section. Let me turn it up a little bit to get that moving and you'll see it'll thicken immediately. The good thing about xanthan right. gum is that it thickens with agitation. That You don't need right. to boil it. You don't need to do anything Great. with it. Great. Good. All right. And now we're going to add the strawberries. And it's really important that the strawberries are frozen. Uh -huh. So I even brought dry ice just to make sure that they would be frozen Listen, when they went in the blender. That's a perfect guess. Because if, <laughs> if they melt, then it doesn't work so much. Right. This is kind of where the magic happens. You have to turn it up real high. But don't be afraid. Starting it low. That's it? Yep. I know most of your guests will probably have left by now. Call, call the police. Or... No, no. Most of my guests would be so impressed by now. Oh, wow. Go. Look at that. Just imagine your kids having as much ice cream as they want. As they want. And, and, no, and sugar. no one getting upset about it. And no sugar. That's right. No sugar. Oh, gosh. Can I have just, it now? Just the hippie stevia and agave. Oh, delicious. I mean, it's basically pureed strawberries. It's delicious. What I want to do is I'm going to have to uh, put up a recipe for you because I want Before. you to be able to make this. This is great. I'm having a dinner party next week, and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it at the table. So with an explanation, it took, what, about five minutes to make this? Exactly. You could, it's, it's an under a minute and six ingredients. Just terrific. Now, we're going to ask you a lot of questions. Okay. We've got people calling in and phoning in. And we've got your new book just today. Okay, thank it's so you. so great. Now eat this. Italian. I'm so excited about this. I'm, and I love the fact that there's a picture of your mom in here. That the book's dedicated to my yeah, mom. Yeah, that's so great. There she is. All good things mama. start with mamas. That's right. You know. And a lot of people want to know about your mom and, and what tips she's given you through the year. So you'll tell us that Yeah, later. I will definitely do Okay, that. so here's yeah. our questions, and we're, we've got a lot for you. This is from Brianna. Hi, Brianna. What are the three most fattening ingredients I should avoid when trying to eat and cook healthy? Well, a complicated question because it's not just about fattening ingredients, it's about co most caloric ingredients and nutrient uh, empty ingredients. Okay, so the, the first things I'd ask you to avoid are sugar, white flour, white rice. Oh. Those are the most fattening even though they're not the most caloric right. because they, they are um, nutri nutritionally bankrupt. 
So you want foods that have some nutrition in it. So if you replace uh, sugar with the agave nectar we used, or fruit sugars, or just you know eating strawberries, apples, pears instead of putting sugar in your food, right. and you replace white rice with brown rice right. and white flour with whole wheat flour, you'll be doing yourself a lot of good. But of course, fat calories are double the calories of carbs and protein. So you want to avoid fats where possible. So basic nutrition, right? A, car, a gram of carb is four calories. A gram of protein is four calories. A gram of fat is nine. So every time you eat a gram of fat, it's twice as many calories as everything else. But how does an Italian not have pasta? What kind? What do you do? It's with a very good question. How does an Italian not have pasta? I spent two years researching that so I could give you 20 pasta recipes in the book that yeah. don't make you fat. I, saw I even that. have a pasta chart in there, the guide to pasta. I know, selection. and I'm so glad you gave me this book today. I'm really excited about it. So on the, this is a graph that shows us what. This goes through all the alternatives and varieties of pasta that you can have that are good for you because pasta is made from grain and grain is good for you. It's only right. when they process the grain and they turn it into that uh, white stuff that it's no good for you. So there's einkorn, there's corn, there's uh, quinoa, we, there's quinoa, whole we wheat, do quinoa, yeah, yeah, there's brown rice. And the whole wheat sometimes tastes weedy though. Except if you, so that's why I picked a couple in here for you to point out. Alcho Nato makes a great one. Kamut is another ancient grain of wheat that is really delicious. Um, but some of them, you're right, are, are kind of tough. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll have to, we'll go through there yeah. and pick a few. Okay, that's great. That's a good question. This is from Tina B. Hi, Tina B. Are there any foods that act as a natural appetite suppressant? Actually, I don't know of any foods that are supp appetite suppressants, but I do know that if you eat regularly every two to three hours, you'll never feel hungry. When you feel hungry, your body goes into sort of a, a self-defense mode, right. and you just become voracious. You won't eat anything you see, and you'll right. start making really bad choices. So never allow yourself to get to the level where you're feeling hungry. If you're never feeling hungry, you'll never make bad choices. Now, they always say that, sh that sugar makes you, you know, gives you a high and then brings you down, but with something like the this kind of natural sweeteners that you gave us today. Will that give us a high? It, it the reason refined sugar gives you a high and then you crash is because it's processed. It's essentially all energy without any of the fiber that normally comes with it. Right. When they take sugar cane, they beat it and process the sugar out of it, they take all the fiber out of it. Right. Um, so that's why brown sugar is even slightly better because it has some of the molasses in it which contains fiber. So any sugar that contains fiber like the agave nectar we used will not do that to you because it's not that's instant great. fuel. It's not like throwing uh, lighter fuel on, on a, a barbecue. Right. Yeah. You want to avoid that. That's good. That's good. That's good to know. This is from Jason. I'm not overweight, but I absolutely love salt and gravitate to salty foods. I'm concerned about the health implications, and I wonder if too much salt can leave you bloated, and what do you suggest I do to curve my salt craving? So that's like a 12-part question. Well, number one, we need to have a certain amount of salt in our diet, but not as much as, as in our foods. Uh, number two, salt does make food taste better, but salt is only one of four basic flavors. Sour, salt, sweet, bitter. Uh, so if you amp up the, sa the sour and the sweet and the bitter, you'll need less salt. The other thing is you become addicted to the flavor of salt and you can get rid of that addiction simply by reducing the amount of salt you eat over time. Don't do it in one day, do it over a few months and you'll eat less salt. You'll find it'll be really easy later. And yes, you can get bloated and bloated is awful, terrible. <laughs> Drink a lot of water if you're bloated. That's right. This is from Elise. What would you say is the single biggest mistake people make when they're trying to eat healthy and lose weight? Uh, without question, go on a gimmick diet. The, uh -huh. you know, the cabbage soup, the banana diet, the this stuff. I've the done all those. The, done yeah, everyone's done them all, and they don't work. You can't, you can't undo a lifetime of um, eating habits and preferences overnight. It's impossible. So you have it's to make a lifestyle change. It's also depressing to eat a cabbage soup all day long. Yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, you it know, just, you just want, you don't want to do anything. So, uh, so that's the biggest mistake is getting on one of those fad diets. So the real way to do it is to is to, what, cut out the sugar, cut out the whites? You have to make a lifestyle change. And I know yeah. it's almost a cliche now, but you basically have to um, convert your unhealthy lifestyle into a healthy lifestyle, which means being conscious of right. everything that you put in your mouth, right. being conscious of burning calories in addition to cutting calories, you know, exercise, lean muscle, that is a part of reality for a healthy person. Right. Like you, look at you. Yes. You do it all right, yeah, I guess, I do, right? I do, I yeah. do, and I run in the park. There you go. Uh, this is from Stacy. My husband and I hate to have a kitchen full of pots to clean, but we love to cook. So what's a good Italian one-pot one wonder? Th that's a great question. Actually, uh, you would never want me in your kitchen because I will use every <laughs> pot you've ever bought and pots you didn't even know you had and leave them not washed. Um, <laughs> Almost every Italian dish is a one-pot wonder. They, a lot of Italian dishes are made uh, basically by stewing ingredients together. Uh, when you make pasta, instead of using a colander, just use tongs to pull the pasta out of the water and put them into your sauce. That's one way to save one utensil. Um, and then 
stew things together. You know, meats and vegetables and uh, herbs all go great together in one pot. Don't you have to rinse the starch off the pasta? No, you don't. That is a uh, That's myth. That's what my mom that told me myth. to do, really. Well, if your mom tells you to do it, then it's 100 percent right. <laughs> well, tell me. You don't <laughs> then there's no reason to rinse the starch off because the, the, the pasta's been boiling in water, so it's naturally being rinsed. And there's nothing wrong with that starch, what? especially if it's healthy pasta. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's the first but thing you I've said ever kitchen, heard that my mother said, was wrong about. She's your mother's not wrong. We would not. <laughs> I would never say something like that. Uh, you told me that uh, chicken cacciatore is one of your favorite uh -huh, dishes. Yes. That's a great one pot meal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love that. Love that dish. Uh, this is from Miles. Hi, Rocco. Several of my friends have started eating six small meals a day versus the traditional three meals, and they say they feel great. Do you have an expert opinion on whether six meals a day is better? Funny you should ask. We just <laughs> spoke about that. Let right. me show you. In the back of this book, I have a diet plan that actually calls for six meals a day. And it lays out all the calories. So here you go. If you An look Italian through. diet plan. Yes, wow. exactly. It tells you what dishes you can have and adds up all the calories. And it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, plus two snacks. Great. Or at least two snacks, three for men. Yes, you should eat frequently. You should eat all the time. Right. The biggest diet myth is that you should starve yourself. That does not work. It actually causes weight gain, not weight loss. That's so right. I'm all about the six because meals a day Because then you plan. binge, right? Yeah, but it can't be six, you know, it can't be six Big Macs a day. Right. right. It's got to be six, two to three hundred calorie meals a day. Right. Uh, so what would you put in that two to three hundred calorie meal? Uh, almost everything in this book is three hundred calories. Right. So anything that's in this book would so anything that's piece, in all five of my books. A little would be. piece of meat, little maybe a little pasta. Um, a, a two ounce portion of pasta with a reasonable a sauce with a reasonable amount of oil in it is two hundred to three hundred calories. So you can have a, you can have a real entree yeah, for that. No, that that's calories. great. I'll listen, to, yeah. pasta six times a day. I'm in. You can totally <laughs> do that if it's the right kind of pasta. Okay. But you know, then there's a snack can be an apple which is yes, great. You know, right. if you just simply eat an orange versus drinking a glass of orange juice, you'll cut 100 calories right, every time. Right, right. Yeah. I love orange. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is from Dennis. I'm too busy to cook a lot, of the t a lot of the time. Do you have any tips for meals that can be whipped up in two or three steps? I, Dennis, I totally get where you're coming from. I'm also too busy and um, I love cooking so much, so it's really difficult to reconcile that in my brain every day. Uh, the truth is you do have to make more time to cook if you want to be healthy. The people who make food commercially are not looking out for our health. They're, they are not uh, building food that is in our best interest. They're building food that will uh, market well, sell well, make a lot of profit, last a really long time on the shelf. And if that's what you want to put in your body, then it's up to you. But if you want to take control, you have to cook. So make it a, more of a priority and make something like I just, uh, I just showed Marlo to make, right. the instant Italian ice. And it's literally three minutes. I also wrote a book on five-minute meals that... Oh, can, great. Yeah, five ingredient, five minute meals. Oh, that, well, that, that answers the question. And yep. that's in the book? It's, uh, it's another book, another but book. Uh, I have a lot of really quick dishes in there. What's the name of that book? Uh, five Minute Flavor. Five Minute but Flavor. But this was literally under three minutes, I believe, start to finish, what we just made. Oh, together. yeah. yeah. No, I know. That was great. Um, this is from Sharon. Hello, Rocco. I'm a vegetarian, and I feel like all I've been eating lately is pasta and salad. Is there any other type of Italian food I can make that's healthy and meat-free? Yeah, focus on the green vegetables. That's, the Italians are famous for how they make green vegetables. Um, and they just simply stew them with a little bit of garlic, pepperoncino, which is the dried chili right. pepper. You'd be surprised how much flavor that adds to it. It's just a little bit. It doesn't have to be spicy. So broccoli, beans. Yeah, broccoli, kale, right. um, all the, all the, all the um, cruciferous right. vegetables. Yeah. Great. Um, if you're a vegetarian and you eat cheese, then you've got a lot of options. One of my favorite recipes from the book is fagiolini with ricotta salata. It's just cooked green beans with ricotta salata shaved on top. Oh, that sounds yeah. delicious. Italy is a haven for vegetarians. There's so many great vegetables I there. Know. Dora, I, don't, I, don't, I know you don't think that you have to sacrifice flavor to eat healthy. Do you have three tips on how to eat delicious? Yes. Uh, now eat this, now eat this diet, now eat this Italian. Those are my three <laughs> tips. The three books I wrote on exactly how to eat healthy and delicious. As a matter of fact, the dedication page of the book says, what does it say? I don't have my glasses. Healthy <laughs> and delicious are no longer mutually exclusive. Oh, that's great. That's um, great. You basically let, let someone else do the work for you like I have. Okay, that's great. But when you cook it yourself, you're always going to make a better choice than the commercial food manufacturers do, or the fast food, or the quick right, serve restaurants right. do. Yeah. Tony, uh, from Tony, for pasta all Americana, do you prefer pancetta or, I don't know how to pronounce that. Or guanciale, this is a great question. Tony, um, I'm going to um, commit a, a sin now. <laughs> pancetta and guanciale are what's called for in the matriciana. Uh, and I recently made this with a woman in Sorrento. And I used copa, and she thought I was a lunatic, and literally spent the next 10 hours of a shoot day <laughs> saying that what I made was not a matriciana because it didn't have guanciale or pancetta. I make it with neither because they have way too much fat. I use copa, which is co co copacola, 
basically, mm -hmm. which is a shoulder cut. It's got a little less fat, but it has that salty cured flavor. Uh, and so that's what I prefer. What did I she think? Did she taste it? She, she tasted it and she's like, ma questo non è a matriciano, ma che è questo? All day long she was saying, he doesn't know what he's doing. He didn't make a matriciano. Um, but it, this is a healthy amatriciana. <laughs> but in Italy, depending where you come from, they'd use either pancetta or guanciale, which is cured pig's cheek. Uh -huh. This guy right here. Yeah, and, and puts it right back there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is from Carol. What's your favorite recipe for simple yet best tasting Italian tomato oh. sauce? I made it two weeks ago. I took tomatoes from my garden. I sauteed garlic and pepperoncino, the little chili pepper, and a little, one tablespoon of olive oil. I chopped the tomatoes up. I put them in the pot. I let them cook for 40 minutes, and that was literally the best tasting tomato sauce I oh, ever tried. The recipe's in the book. It's called Spaghetti Pomodoro. So in the summer, and, and still now, there are great tomatoes available. Yeah. Make them from fresh tomatoes. No basil? Oh, here's a, no basil? Here's, I was just going to thank you for reminding me. I learned in Italy that they put the basil in with the oil, uh -huh. They fry the basil with the oil, and the oil takes on the flavor of basil. Uh -huh. I always thought you should put it in at the end. Yeah, I did too. But it works much better their way. Oh, good, yeah. good. Glad to know. Then, of course, onions and garlic, right? Uh, just garlic, no onions. Yeah, no See, onions. in Italy, they're very spare about their ingredients. Oh, really? No, 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 cipolla, perché? No, no. <laughs> Black pepper, no, 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 you know, they're very, it's all sacred to them. My, my mother always sautéed the onions Mine and the garlic too. first, Mine brown too. that, then yeah. start with the other. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, this is from Phyllis. I'm Italian. And there's been a big debate with my friends on Facebook on whether it's Sunday sauce or Sunday gravy. So is it sauce or gravy? That's a huge question. Uh, this is a gigantic, that's many a life people, question. I'm, many yeah. people wrote in about this. Um, I s actually sell um, Sunday gravy or sauce, whatever you want to call it, on my truck, and I decided to call it Sunday ragu. Oh, just to right. settle the, the debate and it. give people, you know, tell people what it is. Ragu is when you cook meat slowly right. in tomato sauce. And uh, my mom always called it gravy. Did so she really? If I, yeah, so if I were going to go. It sounds like yeah. an Americanization of, of It totally is, yeah, it totally is, yeah. Where's your but they didn't from? have ragu in America when the Italians came over 150 years ago, so they had to improvise. Where's your mother from? Naples. Naples? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my, my grandpa's she from always, Naples. Really? Yeah. That's where the good Italians come And my from. other side is Sicilian. My gangster side, so don't, <laughs> I won't mess don't, with you. don't mess with me. I won't steal these beautiful uh, sorbet cups that I have in my eye. But Is my it, mom always said, uh, today's a Sunday, I'm making the gravy. Oh, really? Yeah, so, yeah. That's interesting. Never in my family. If I'm Philomena, I'm Italian. My family always put ground pork in the beef meatballs to keep it moist and, do, and for the flavor. Do you do that or do you use ground veal? Philomena. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom's nickname. How, what a coincidence. Yeah. Um, so my mom always used um, pork, veal, and beef. And I've remade them because they were 250 calories a meatball. And right. now I've remade them to 45 calories a meatball. We might actually have some here. I don't now know if this is your recipe. This is my recipe from the book that I sell on the truck. And it's of the meatballs. Mm. And that's puff brown. That's uh, pasta made from brown rice. Oh, my God. And these are the meatballs that are made with uh, turkey, puff oh brown God. rice. Oh, my God. Delicious. They're down from oh. 250 calories to 45. What page is this in the book? Uh, it's towards the end. It's in there. There's a whole section on it. And it's called what? Look at her bites. They're oh so small. God. This is a real bite. Oh, I know. What you don't have on lipstick. Mm. What, what do you call this so we can find it? Mama's meatballs with penne. Oh, God. That's great. Okay. You would never know those are healthy, oh, right? Oh, so good. Now, how many calories? This is 349 for the whole thing. Really? Two ounces of pasta, three meatballs. And it would be usually how much? 1,500. So yeah. this could be a whole meal and I'm okay? This isn't. You'll, you'll, you'll be very full. You won't even be able to finish that. Whenever you eat whole food, um, there's a lot of um, fiber in it. Mm -hmm. And your body takes a long time to digest fiber. So um, you feel full longer. And the noodle is made of what? Brown rice. God, it's you good. You would never knew that, right? Never. You would never know that, yeah. Mmm, delicious. So there are good alternatives out there. You don't have to settle. And what's this one? So this is pasta genovese. Oh, my God. And it's made with um, beef and onions. Oh. Taste some of that beef. Oh my gosh. So this beautiful. I learned in Italy this summer, actually. I never had heard about it before. It's basically uh, beef and whatever amount of beef you use, you use seven times the amount of onions. <laughs> so what's in yeah. your meatball? So it's 96% uh, lean beef, lean pork. Most pork is lean these days. And turkey, which is always lean. So turkey is 30% meat. leaner than chicken. Yeah, so three meats. And three meats. And then the, the other half of meat I've replaced with... Uh, so if I use two ounces before, I use one ounce and the other ounce is now puff brown rice. Oh, not the stale bread? No, the stale bread would not, would be an example of one of those things that you want to avoid. I see. Puff brown rice is a very good um, alternative. Really? Okay, yeah. we're gonna do that. Gretchen, as an Italian, where would you go for Italian if you went out? There's a zillion Italian restaurants. 
in New York. So can that's you a, that's, a, that's a tough one, right? As an Italian, you, you, you want to see it off your As truck, an Italian, right? restaurant is a four-letter word. I mean, when I was a kid and I went to a restaurant, I'd get in trouble. Really? Uh, and it, the sauce is never good. It's tough to it's find. Never yeah. good. It's you know, never restaurants good. Uh, sort of do everything in their power to make things fancy, feel like a special occasion. Right. And Italian food is the opposite of that. I know, it's so simple. I know, you, I know. You know, it's almost a, um, an exercise in self restraint. Right. And so I think restaurants have a hard time and they struggle with that. I Plus, know. we don't have ingredients here that are anywhere. You've been to Italy, yes. you know what that food right. tastes like. Yeah. So it's tough. Although I do love Mario Batali's restaurants. Yeah, they are They're good. very yeah, good. Yeah. And San Domenico, too. You're probably sad to see it go from yeah, this neighborhood, absolutely. right? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah. And keep the peas out of the pasta sauce. I don't hate when they put things like that in it. Uh, cancel our Alfredo, <laughs> please. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's okay in a cream sauce, not okay. Oh, okay, good. Uh, Pamela. Hi, Put Rocker. <laughs> I'm always on the go, and I was hoping you could give me some tips for healthy, portable snacks. I love this question. Great question. Okay, so imagine you're, you're in an airport, you're hungry. Um, you can either have the 700-calorie smoothie, right. a Cinnabon, one of those hot right. dogs wrapped in pretzel right. dough. There's really <laughs> no know. options. You want to kill yourself. I love that Pamela's even thinking about portable snacks because the idea for me is to bring snacks with you. I use a dops kit, you know, one of those little men's shaving right. kit. I empty right. it out and I put in um, nuts and little little uh, snack packs, um, fruit like apples that don't go bad very quickly, right. um, healthy um, whole grain bars, right. you know, not the ones that are like a molecule away from a Snickers bar. Have you like really, yeah, 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 really healthy them. ones, yeah. What, what's a healthy one? Because there's so many. Is it one you dare uh, suggest? Uh, you mean a brand? Uh-huh. Oh, um, some of them don't taste well. Some of them taste like. There's a brand shoot. called Greenies or Green Bar. They're made uh, Green Bar. from they're made from seaweed, uh -huh. and they use date paste and cocoa powder, and they make a chocolate one that's really good. I and like it's good. One. It tastes yeah, good. It's very okay, good. good. Okay, this is from Adam. Hi, I travel a lot for work. Do you have any suggestions on how to make healthy choices when eating out? So that's you know, if you travel, you have to eat so out. Tough. So, so tough. So tough. Eating out is really tough because like we were discussing earlier, no one, no one makes healthy food. You can have what looks like a healthy meal at a very fabulous restaurant and it could be two or 3,000 calories. I mean, a, a margarita is 500 calories, so <laughs> there, you've got no shot. So what you need to do when you eat out is take control. Restaurants are there for you to make you happy, so you need to tell them immediately, I'm on a restricted calorie diet, I need to have an entree that's 500 calories or less, tell the chef to make it for me. I eat fish, I eat this, I eat that. And they, and they should do it for you. If they don't do it for you, go to another restaurant. Absolutely. Yeah. And they have that in some restaurants. They, they do. They're it. starting to do that. And I think we're, at, we're, we're approaching the yeah. tipping point in American we're culture. We're really worse. changing yeah. the culture. Yeah. It's amazing. This is from Hannah. Rocco, I'm trying to get my kids into the habit of making healthier eating choices, but just getting them to finish their vegetables is like pulling teeth. What can I do to broccoli that isn't just butter? Do you have any good tips yes. for making vegetables tastier so my kids will eat them? I think when it comes to vegetables, you should lie and deceive your children and feel no guilt about it whatsoever. You should sneak them into everything. Uh, I make a mac and cheese with broccoli and ham. That uh, is a really good um, broccoli starter for kids. Right. That's great. So just sneak them in. You sneak them in. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And you know, you can always uh, coat them with some cheese and the things that you know, right. your kids love. Ketchup, right. they always love ketchup. Use the right. reduced sugar ketchup. But when you t when, if I was gonna make a, a yeah. broccoli dish, how will mm -hmm. I make that? Because I, I, I know broccoli's good for you, but I don't really like the taste of it. So what? I love it, how can you not say that's so delicious? Well, there you go. What about cauliflower? Uh, no, I not like, so much. I, no. So you're not into the cruciferous stuff? No, okay. I, I don't mind Brussels sprouts. That's really odd. I'm Most the people, only everyone, everyone hates Brussels I sprouts Brussels. universally. <laughs> I love them too. Yeah. So what do I do to my broccoli? Well, in the case of the macaroni and cheese, I cut them up into small florets and I toss them with the noodles and right. the ham, little bits of boiled ham, which happens to be pretty lean. And then I coat the whole thing with uh -huh. whole wheat breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. Uh -huh. So you can't even see what's inside right. there. So you just got a <laughs> leap of faith right in there and just eat and eat it. Oh, and it's delicious and you don't care. So also cooking the broccoli a little more, making it tender really helps a lot because I think the problem with people have with broccoli is when you crunch into it, it tastes like sulfur. It doesn't the taste, well, it. to me it doesn't taste at all. But anyway, okay, this is from Stacy. This How, one of my favorite, we, we can debate this, Rob. <laughs> I love broccoli. Yeah. How about the secret recipe to mama's meatballs? This is, there's no secret, it's on every website. We've been giving that recipe away for 10 years. Oh, really? It's in the book, the okay, healthy good. version's in the book. Okay, well that's yeah. reason, <laughs> that's reason For sure, yeah, yeah. You know, that book just came out today, right? Today, I know, today's pub day. So I'm so, so excited. excited to have you on this day. Okay, this is from the Fighting Irish. What are three tips your mother gave you about cooking? Huh, the, the thing that I learned from my mother about cooking in the, in the restaurant business is that it's not about the food at all. It's about the people and that as a cook or as a host or someone welcoming someone into your home or your restaurant, your job is to make people happy. 
and that the connection between people is the most important part of that experience. And I learned that from her um, the first day of my first job in a pizzeria at 11 years old in Queens. And I've never <laughs> lost that, that uh, lesson, and it's served me well to this day. Now, if you want something really practical about cooking, less philosophical, taste your food. You'd be so surprised how few people taste their food until it's done. When it's done, it's too late. You have to taste your food as you cook. As you go. So when my mom cooked, she was constantly, had her fingers yeah. in the food, was constantly tasting. Right. And if you go into a restaurant and you see chefs, you know, touching the food a lot, don't be disgusted. That's probably an indication that they're really good and it's going to be good food. Right. Yeah. yeah. Tasting as you go. This is from Sunset Susie. What's the best substitute for pasta if you can't eat wheat? Well, that's in here. Yeah, it's in the book. Uh, quinoa is a great one and brown rice pasta, like right. what you just had. Right. Great. And it's still good. Uh, from David, I know sugar is bad for you. In cooking, what do you use to substitute for sugar? I'm not supposed to eat dairy, and what do you use to substitute for dairy? So, great questions. For example, in the uh, Italian ice, um, I picked a fruit that's naturally sweet, like strawberries, so right. I didn't need a lot of sugar, and then I used stevia and agave nectar. Right. Sugar is really bad for you, and you should really give it up. And I remember the day I gave it up about six years ago. Um, about two weeks later, I lost 10 pounds doing no absolutely nothing other than yeah. giving up sugar. Um, and for dairy, well, you could use the, if you want to really substitute it, you can use almond milk, of course. Mm -hmm. You can use soy milk. Uh, you can use yogurt uh, that's made and from soy. And there's great soy cheeses. Yeah. There are I use, I use the yeah. soy mozzarella in my lasagna. Nobody knows the difference. It's just delicious. Nobody is it a secret? Your husband it, doesn't know? No, Should we tell him? <laughs> We've been married long enough. He knows, he knows all my secrets now, but he didn't at first. Yeah, plus he's really good at getting information out of people. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> this is from Stephanie. Yes, I love this. Oh, so what, good. A good recipe for I a creamy ranch type. That's okay. Yeah. You get to see. For a ranch type dressing for salad that's healthier than packaged dressing. So we want a good recipe for creamy ranch type. So you, what you need to do is get an MSG free package of ranch seasoning. And there's one out there. Um, it's from the famous company that makes the ranch. They also make another another MSG free one. And I use low fat buttermilk and uh, all natural fat free Greek yogurt. There's actually a recipe in my last book for it because I love ranch and it's it's amazing it's essentially fat free sugar free and so good what makes ranch so good is the thick creamy dairy yes, right. and the the mix of the garlic and all those spices right. so yeah. to replace the dairy what do you do if you want to replace the dairy completely um, you could use the milk well, milk wouldn't replace dairy. You could, I, I don't think she was asking well, to replace I mean, dairy. I those almond milks or soy oh, milks? Oh, I don't think almond milk would be too no, good, but soy, soy milk could soy work, milk yeah, as long as it's not a sweet one. Good. Yeah, the, the thing with soy milk and almond, they sweeten them automatically a lot. Right. So you've got to be careful to make sure it's unsweetened. Right, right, right. That's why right. they taste so good. I, I can't eat dairy, so I'm always Oh, okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. This is from Judy. What is your best recipe for eggplant? I'm on the fence about eggplant. I've found only one place to get really tasty eggplant parmesan, but I'm not sure if I can make it as well at home. Uh, I happen to love grilled eggplant. I, I put grilled eggplant in these meatballs. I have an eggplant parmesan recipe in the book that's made from grilled eggplant. Um, when you char eggplant, it's Ma it's just pure magic. The flavor is amazing. We're running out of time. I'm, oh, get, I'm getting the hook. And I, and like I'm another hundred questions. I, I know. Here. So I'm trying to find uh, uh, ones that I think will. Uh, will let's see here now. I, I saw one that I think a lot of people would like to know about. Now where is it? Uh, oh, I love the taste of Caesar salad, but everyone says it's the most fattening. Is that true? And how can you make it so it's not that fattening? Yeah, Caesar salad dressing is pretty fattening. Um, what it makes starts it so out with fattening? an egg yolk, which yeah. has got a lot of fat in it, and then the egg yolk, into the egg yolk, a lot of oil is emulsified. So it's not the it's not the healthiest one. I do have a recipe for um, a low-fat Caesar dressing. You do? Uh, yeah, I do. So I have what's a recipe the for everything. So I've written nine secret? books. So what's the secret nine of books. the low-fat uh, Caesar dressing? You have to dressing. create emulsification without the egg yolk. So that would basically be using a blender and pureeing garlic. I use uh, onion, onion and garlic puree. Uh -huh. Yeah, to, as the base of the, of the thing. It's my husband's so favorite dressing. Mustard I've got to figure out how to do it. has very little calories. Mustard's really good for you. Uh, lemon juice, very little calories. And Parmesan Reggiano is actually pretty low in calories because right. it's made from skim milk. The only pro that's, those are the ingredients of Caesar. Right. The only ingredient that there are problems with is the egg yolk and the oil. So right. I basically use everything else and just a little bit of oil instead. Right. A little bit of oil. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it's online somewhere if you look. Okay, I'm going to do the one last question okay. because they're going to kill me. This is from Harriet. How do you even begin to change a family's eating habits? Do you do it little by little? Do you just take out one thing? Which food should I subtract first and add first? I know you do this on your show, but do they stick to them? It seems hard. We could write a book about, about this answer, but, but I think idea, incremental, like, yeah. incremental. See, all change is good change. It's, when it comes to changing from unhealthy to healthy, it's not an all or nothing game. Everything you do, 
will eventually add up to some good. So small incremental changes over time are right. what I recommend. So what should we take out first? Would you take out sugar, the sugar? Yeah. Sugar, out, just get rid of it. Take out you the know, sugar. You know when you have like a boyfriend, a girlfriend, you know they're not the right person, right. and for five years, 10 years, you're like, I should break up with this person. Then when you finally do it, it's like, why didn't I do that 10 years ago? Right. It's the same thing with sugar. Go in the kitchen and break up with it now. Good. Yeah. Okay, great. You're great. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. It's been so much fun. Thank you. Thank Have you. a little time. So nice on. to meet you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, I'll see you next week.